and I look and there he is dissolved mm. with like maggots all over him and flies and liquid draining down the bed and I'm lost in the woods but I found this camera and mic under a tree so I figured I'd make this show if you're listening to this episode congratulations you successfully time traveled but tread lightly because this is the It's Spooky Season podcast Welcome to the It's Spooky Season podcast, episode five, where we're coming along five episodes in. That makes me incredibly happy. And we have an amazing guest today, Dave. And Dave, I have read up on what you do, but I want you to tell the audience who you are, what you do, what you're about, and uh, what you love. Oh, that'd be awesome. First, thanks for having me on your inaugural season, five episodes in. That's an accomplishment these days. So mm-hmm. <laughs> the fact that you're doing it is great. Uh, and I love your subject matter. Well, for your audience, I am Dave Shelton. And uh, maybe your fans might know me as a writer from Everybody Loves Raymond or with National Lampoon, where I was for nine years, and I was with Disney and Klasky Supo and the Sci-Fi Channel. I'm also a cartoonist, so that's what I worked on those um, from. And amazing, amazing. I've, I've worked on a lot of different things. They can go to my website, snuggybear.com, mm-hmm. S-N-U-G-Y-B-E-A-R.com, and they can find out my bio and all about it, because it'll take like half an hour just to talk about that. I, I'd like to get into all the cool stuff. Yeah, so I would love to even, let's start from the tippy top, from the beginning. What even got you into horror, the paranormal? Why this? Well, ever since I was little, I've always had experiences. Uh, Some I didn't know. My parents were atheists, Mm -hmm. and I've always felt something more, you know, and I've always always been, I'm very kind of the brainy type, nerdy, Mm -hmm. and I've always been into reading and I've always just loved horror. And I guess because I, when I was little, I started watching black and white horror movies. Mm. Like, uh, cause my cousins and everything were into that, you know, like Frankenstein and all of the other universal movies. And then I discovered zombie movies mm-hmm. like Night of the Living Dead. So it, it just was something I was very attracted to, but I always very, uh, I was always very spiritual and I always, felt very spiritual that there's something more because you know when these atheists and so funny I became a comedian also that's where my National Lampoon background comes from ah. uh, because, because I so got my dad and like whenever he was um, saying something nasty or something mm-hmm. I'd always talk back and he didn't like that so one day he came home with like a, a bag and there was change it and he threw it mm-hmm. and because he got mad a lot but yeah. he didn't like that I came out. He said, there you go, throwing money around again. And I was like eight years old. <laughs> oh my like gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I always had to come back. Well, being from Jersey, that's it's a kind of, I think it's built into your matrix. It's like, oh, yeah, be be like tough. forget about it, you know, like, okay, right? Mm. And, um, so um, so I had always been very spiritual and I, I would tell not only them, but some of the other people I knew who were atheists, I go, then you explain to me why things develop the way they do. Why are there natural resources for us to use? Mm -hmm. Why do all the animals, most of the animal species and us have the same look? You know, that's not just a coincidence, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and why does Hollywood continue to put out crap? That's not a coincidence either. So, <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I've always had a love for it, and um, I've I started experiencing some very strange angelic things when I was young, like um, presences, or you know, like when you're walking and somehow something stops you from walking in the middle of the street if there's a car mm. coming. Uh, I've had experiences like that my whole life. So that's what got me into that. And the, it's fun for me, writing horror and working in the horror industry, as well as the other industries, is just something, I think it's a matrix thing. You either love it or you don't. And yeah. I, I I just happen to love it. You it's know, like you're, 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 it's just part of you. Yeah, I was going to say, it's interesting you say that because I think a lot of people think horror and spooky and they automatically go negative when it doesn't always have to be that way well the same way they think about witches 
Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some, I know witches and Wiccans. They're great people. I mean, you know, I, I think it's the same way that people get persecuted all through history. Like I'm half Jewish and half mm -hmm. Christian. And my Jewish side, we were totally, totally enslaved by the Pharaohs and yeah. the Romans. And then Moses let us out. And I'm going, so, you know, there's been persecutions and the fact that everyone looks at things so negatively. And then the same with witches. Mm -hmm. They think of witches as Salem and that all they do is cast dispersions and spells of evil and and things like that right. and go after Dorothy. Although I love the way <laughs> witches last and stuff, but uh, <laughs> but uh, but they're not. They're really cool. Right. I mean, I'm when not you... very I'm not very happy with the Sanderson sisters right now with the oh, second yeah. focus. Oh, that was something else. I was like, am I supposed to be 12 to watch this? Like, this is, feels weird. Well, no, it <laughs> just becomes such a woke movie. Hollywood mm -hmm. used to be all about the quality of the product. And now it's all about agendas right. and the thing. And for me, as a also producer director, when I write and create stuff and produce it, because I've had some shows on Amazon and things like that, I do not care what you look like as long as you can act. Mm -hmm. you know I, i'm not going to go for a certain look because that's the flavor of the month yeah. if if you're either good or you're bad i don't care you be an alien or a turtle <laughs> i would cast a turtle if they had more talent than a human <laughs> and, a, and a lot of turtles do have more talent than humans so they really do i have two turtles <laughs> and, and and they are really good to work with they're mm -hmm. slow they, they don't ask for much. It's easy <laughs> to feed them. You know? so, oh, totally. uh, I'm, yeah. very, I'm very curious. Um, when did you or how did you start to get all of your knowledge on horror, witchcraft, like all of the above? Because it's not something you get overnight. Did you find yourself studying it? Is it something that was a part of like your job day to day? Uh, it kind of com was a combination of everything. Um, I definitely wanted to study it and I read everything I could. I mean, my favorite authors were like Charles Dickens mm -hmm. and um, Arthur Conan Doyle and uh, people who did a lot of horror back in the 30s, 40s and 50s and, and the adaptations of the movies. I always loved dark mysteries like the Charlie Chan, especially when they had a horror or a mystery element to it mm -hmm. and things. And, and those were big inspirations. And I always knew I wanted to go in the film and and cartooning and uh, and the film industry as well. So yeah. it was a level of combination of all of that. And it was sort of the pattern that you take. I didn't have any connections in it. This was all self-produced. I, I developed my own uh, system of doing things. And then I just pounded payment. I went to film school at University of Florida. Mm -hmm. Then I studied animation at the new school in New York City. And then I just started pounding the pavement. So I was able to get different jobs. I worked at Nickelodeon when I first started on Double Dare. I worked at MTV mm -hmm. when they first started. I started meeting people. I put portfolios together. And, oh, wow. and then I started working on books and things like that. So it was a progression and as yeah. is, I won't go into all the credits, but I've done a lot of stuff and all through the way, I know there have been, you know, I have a guardian angel, a psychic came up to me once at a signing in San Diego and told me I had a guardian angel and oh it was my, my grandmother, my mother's mother. Oh, and I, I said, I felt that, but, um, and uh, one time I was at the precious moments chapel I think it's either in Kansas or Missouri, mm -hmm. you know, the little dolls that they put out with the teardrop eyes. Yeah. And it was the middle of winter and there's a island right in the middle of a lake where the, um, where the whole thing is. It's kind of like a, a whole community of precious moment stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like little village. And my rented car started sliding towards the, <laughs> the end of the road into the lake Ooh. and right I knew we were going to go in I couldn't do anything well suddenly it stopped at the edge of the bank mm. and I know someone stopped that there is no way 
whether it was a spirit of my grandmother or another spirit, there was just something there. Yeah. And, and I feel that all the time uh, on the paranormal end. I've done a lot of hunts. I've gotten calls from uh, an old friend who had died to tell mm-hmm. me that his widow was in the hospital and he called me from his mm-hmm. disconnected phone number and told me to kind of, you know, get hold of her. And I thought that yeah. was spooky, but cool. I was just walking down the street and the, the phone call is like, Peggy's in the hospital. Oh I'm like, goodness. what? Peggy's in the hospital. And wow. then it hung up and I called our pastor who told me, yes, she had gone into the hospital with a major leg infection and wasn't sure she was going to survive. Fortunately, she did, but she's since passed away then. Mm. But that's a, one of the other reasons I got into voiceovers too. I love to do a lot of voiceovers. Yeah, I, that was eerie. I, you got me. <laughs> I like doing horror voices and cartoon voices. So, and then another time, um, in fact, I left California. I, for a background, I was in, raised in New Jersey. I moved to California in 1990, was there for 30 years. And then recently, three years ago, moved to West Virginia. hmm um, to get out of the rat race of California, which you tell me you live in California. So I know, I know it is interesting <laughs> to, I've been here in like nine years. I'm in my ninth year here. And I told myself, you know, at the 10th year, like, if I'm not feeling it, I'm out. I can try something else, you know? Right. Where are you originally from? Delaware. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a spooky place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's a, um, Fort, Fort, uh, what I don't even know my own town Fort Fort Delaware yeah <laughs> okay it's yeah weird. I mean I've been I'm also a musician I've played in bands and we've toured I've been in circuses it's been a crazy life so um another thing is I worked on a book and this was another paranormal experience mm-hmm. I worked on a book called the um Ghosts of Cielo Drive Yes, was I wanted to hear Cielo? about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the Ghost of Cielo Drive. Okay, I'm trying yeah. to remember the name of the book. I, like I worked on it was a few years ago. And it was with David Oman, who lives in the house right next to where the Sharon Tate murders were with Manson. Mm-hmm. So his house is a full-blown attraction for ghosts and paranormal. And the ghost of Sharon is there and some of the other victims and other people. And then he's a big... Um, Johnson fan the guy who was like one of the first black fighters of the early Mm -hmm. 1900s yeah and he's got this huge collection of his and Jack Johnson that was his name Mm -hmm. and he says that the good that one of the products that he has there actually possesses the spirit of that fighter so he shows up too well I've been in the house and we had a podcast there like a live stream Mm mm-hmm all this weird stuff started happening and he had this action figure on the shelf which was like a slender man it flew off the shelf while we were streaming live wow oh, and i i felt tons of stuff and when i first moved to west virginia i'm in a, a kind of a really scary town called sistersville a lot mm-hmm. of cemeteries and um one time i was at a cemetery at that this one cemetery that inspired my radio show mm-hmm. is called the oakwood cemetery and i was talking to a friend on the phone on halloween night from there mm-hmm. and right by a grave where i was standing we got interrupted by the spirit of the guy who was in the grave while we were talking on the phone mm. and we knew it was a disembodied voice Wow. Um, and then, oh yeah, and I've seen shadow figures there. Then I would, I went to the library, which was down the hill, mm-hmm. and a lot of paranormal stuff ha- happens there. Um, stuff started flying off the shelf. Wow. But, do, do you have any any fear of these, or are you pretty open? You're just I you're just accept like all. I embrace it. The only thing I don't like is when stink bugs get in my window. <laughs> Ah, same. Okay. <laughs> totally and that's not that. being scared. That's just being annoyed. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so. mm-hmm. <laughs> I'd love to hear more about how you met David Omen. That's such an interesting story of being able to write about and experience the house. Well, I got introduced to him by someone mm-hmm. and like a mutual friend who was telling him uh, well, the, David Oman had told my friend that he was looking for someone to work on his book with him. Mm-hmm. And then his friend referred me. And that's how I met him. That's amazing. 
I mean, it's a, it's not really like one of those extraordinary stories. It's just a referral. Oh, but it's but, cool though because it's like you know you just so happen to be able to meet someone who also is just incredibly into the things that you're into as far as oh, the paranormal. Absolutely. That, that's what was great. And, you know, I heard about him because of some of the ghost shows that he was on because of the house. So I mm-hmm. thought, oh my God, this was so cool. And he needed a good editor. So I wound up editing his book and I actually added some of the written part to it based on his notes. Mm-hmm. And it was a long process. He, that was a big book to work on and stuff. But, um, but I was really happy when when we were doing it and I kind of breezed through it. I think the first edit I did in like a three day nonstop 72 hour excursion. Mm. I bar- I barely slept for the whole time I did the first edit because I was wow. so into it and stuff. Yeah. What was, do you think your, or at least now your most, um, your happiest or your proudest moment creating a piece of art via paranormal horror? Well, I've done so many different genres. Um, as a cartoonist, I worked on Tweety and Sylvester. I worked with Disney. I did 101 Dalmatians, a TV show for them. I mm-hmm. uh, was a cartoonist for Tiger Beat as well as a writer. Um, I created all the hacky do characters as a cartoonist for Everybody Loves Raymond. Mm-hmm. So that aspect, I love doing that as an illustrator and cartoonist. Yeah. Um, as far as the paranormal, it's sometimes when I, I did a horror exhibit for UCLA a long time ago, and there were all these kind of weird dreamlike pastels that I did, like mm-hmm. big giant canvases. And I look back at, you know, they all sold out. And I look back at the copies that I made of it now going, wow, where the hell did that come from? Like, what came out of my head? Yeah. <laughs> that caused that to happen and sometimes I just sit down and with a pencil or something and I just say okay paper let's go I never get writer's block or cartoon block or illustrator's block so I um, I have I have a collection of all my cartoons and work from when I was at National Lampoon mm-hmm. and the book is called Brain Explosion because mm. I, I can never turn off. It's so hard for me even sometimes to go to sleep yeah. because my brain just keeps creating, creating, creating. Oh, I, and I love <laughs> I love it though. I prefer it that way because I said, probably when I die, I'll still be creating. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, I'll be like up at the pearly gates and just I'll, making art. Saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, hey, do you guys need a podcast or do you guys need a book edited? <laughs> Yeah. So do you think, so I was having a conversation the other day and uh, some people still believe that talking about the paranormal and horror, despite the shows and the media, it's still pretty taboo to even talk about it as if it's a real thing that exists. You know, everyone believe it's a make-believe, right? Do you think it's still a bit taboo? I only think it's taboo to people who will think that way no matter what. Some people Mm -hmm. get it in their heads, whether it's from a childhood trauma or whether they just refuse to open themselves. These are the same things that I had to deal with as a kid with my parents as atheists because they didn't believe that there's anything beyond what they see. Mm -hmm. You know, God is there and, and God is a spirit and you know you look at Jesus he rose the third day in this spirit mm-hmm. so and the Holy Ghost if they didn't come I mean where do you think I, you know well you would know but where do people think that the word ghost came from right <laughs> right so it's not it didn't come from McDonald's that's yeah. for sure so, <laughs> exactly so so um I think that I think as far as TV and things like that in the media, because of all that glut of ghost shows, which totally bother me because 90% of those people who do those shows either never have experienced anything in their life and they just are getting on this like huge bandwagon mm-hmm. or call it, I call it the TikTok train of things, <laughs> uh, think way of, the TikTok way of thinking just so they can get famous Yep. And and think that, oh, they're they're these huge intelligent ghost hunters because they know how to go to a store and buy a flare mm-hmm. or an EVP reader 
and maybe a digital camera with like night vision and go to a haunted house and think that they could conjure up something right <laughs> okay. right and they're Easy. so boring, first of all, and stuff. And they never catch anything. So. Never, never. It's just a bunch of sound effects that they add in post. A bunch of sound effects <laughs> and go, look out. You know, like it's a cold in here. And, so, so. and then mm. you see the air conditioner against the wall. And that's why you're picking <laughs> the wall. <laughs> so, uh, but as far as the other people's belief of taboo, I still think there's a big stigma only because people are... There, people do not face their fears and that's where that stigma comes from mm -hmm. you know if they just face their fears they might be okay with it but people are afraid look how many people are afraid to get involved to help other people when they're getting hurt yep well I don't I don't want to get involved or I don't want to get hurt myself mm -hmm. and and it's the same with the paranormal people don't want to believe it kind of like the cowardly lion Mm, you know yeah. when he's so afraid and they go i do believe in spooks i do believe in spooks i do believe in spooks <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's kind of like that uh, but for me you know i don't care if they're afraid i just live my life and i embrace it and i welcome it i even have a ouija board yeah oh i'm very curious about your ouija board experience when did you start and when did it start working for you was it right away well, I, well, this is a new one. I did Ouija boards a long time ago and did seances when I was younger. And, um, you know, I didn't like the Parker brothers or, you know, the ones that they manufacture in the boxes mm -hmm. and that are made of cardboard. I wanted a real Ouija board made of wood. So I found the guy who actually makes them from wood, wood that he gets at different lumber yards and things. But you never, those I like because you never know where that wood came from. Wow. The lumber, these lumber yards are like in Michigan or Minnesota where mm -hmm. there's a lot of paranormal. So the lumber yard could have gone out to like a sacred wood ground and logged them from there. Yep. That's so, true. And then passed it down. So this, I found him on eBay and it's so incredible. I haven't used it yet, but it's got all the cool Wiccan symbols on it. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to try it out. But I looking? live in, as I said, Sistersville is a very paranormal town. It's very historic. When I first moved here, it was actually for a writing gig. Mm -hmm. And it was with the newspaper. And because I just took a sabbatical from L.A. when I my ex-fiance and I broke up and I moved her to New Jersey. And I said, what am I doing in L.A.? I could make yeah. movies and write and stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. So I found this gig here and it was in a haunted hotel. Mm -hmm. And I got to live there. Wow. But oh, but since then I found out the, the guy who owned it turned to a slum because he was oh, like a no. slum lord, which mm -hmm. was real from New York and was really sad what he did to this historic hotel. But I did experience some things there. And I wrote a and in fact I produced a short film that won the um Kings of Horror Film Festival. Wow. Uh, about doll. I've always been into possessed dolls and things like Are that. Are you? Ooh, yeah, that's my so that's I, my uh, weakness. Possessed dolls. I have a huge <laughs> I have a huge collection of dolls that I've gotten from different places, mm -hmm. like thrift markets and garage sales. Because, you know, just like probably how, you know, it's kind of like Annabelle, mm -hmm. but but um I was just so into it and I have all, I even have my Chucky and Tiffany talking dolls. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, so, when you're communicating or you're doing Ouija board or seances, what are you looking for? Or do you kind of keep your mind open? My mind is open, but you know, like in most Ouija, you ask specifics. Mm -hmm. So um, I used to do tarot a long time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and then those were more of, self um sort of like self-realization kind of situations yeah. where I wanted to find it more of okay will this happen that happened or that happened but mm -hmm. with the Ouija with the Ouija um I'm open I'm people are saying do not do it alone you know how you have that stereotype and the stigma mm -hmm. um you'll you'll raise the devil and things like that but you know, there's a lot of spirits of really nice people that are out there that you just want to communicate. It's not always going to be, you're going to be raising like an evil spirit, like in the conjuring or insidious or something or Ouija, but right. um, you could, there's good spirits and, and bad spirits all over the air. 
Um, mm -hmm. In fact, where I live in Sistersville, I'm in a, an apartment building now. Mm -hmm. They've had the people die here. And I'm sure if I do the Ouija here, um, who knows what I'll, I'll raise, you know, there's mm -hmm. also cemeteries within a block from me. So right. I wow. have no idea what the people were like who were buried there. Were they evil? Were they serial killers? You, you never know, but you take that chance. But you also have, I also have protections that I use. And I also, I bring my spirit counselor with me when I do mm. these things. That's but, great. you know, like my grandmother and stuff, but I'm fine. Whatever I conjure, I'm so open to it. That's how much I love the paranormal and scary things. I yeah. was in the cemetery by myself on Halloween night at midnight. And, uh, when the ghost voice came up, when the, the spirit voice came up mm -hmm. from the grave and I wasn't freaking, I had to walk back. I was more afraid of getting ticks from the deer that roam around here. Right. I, <laughs> I do not want Lyme disease. That would be worse. <laughs> oh, got you. What's the, the most genuine or nicest uh, paranormal experience you've had? Perhaps you came across a spirit. I'd love to know. Well, definitely the phone call from the deceased with you know a uh, friend mm -hmm. who's telling about his wife uh let's see oh I've had so so many different things um this was kind of weird but funny the day I was moving from mm -hmm. LA uh to move my uh ex to New Jersey when we were leaving when the movers were coming all the boxes were stacked up in the living room and we were sleeping on the couch we broke the bed down Mm -hmm. Well, at six o'clock in the morning, I start, I wake up and she kind of got aroused too. started hearing clicking like, mm -hmm. wow. you know, but you don't know where it's from. So maybe it was from like a clock or something. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden at the end of the clicking, a box that was stacked on top flew across the room mm. and it was a pretty heavy box too. So it took some effort to fly across. And we both heard it. My first inclination was to get my cell phone out. And when I heard the clicking to start recording it. Yeah. But I was so groggy. I didn't even, I didn't run to it fast enough. So I missed videotaping the box, which would have been so cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, that one was a cool one. Wow. And then, yeah. And then um, I've seen a lot of, you know, weird things happening. And as I said, stuff flying off. I kind of like all of it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was wondering if you've ever had something like negative happen that you weren't, you know, too happy about, or perhaps there was a spirit who was trying to tell you something, but it kind of came across very, uh, not so fun. Dark and evil. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of all the experiences. I wouldn't, may, maybe because I'm so into it and I like it, the more morbid, the better. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so it's not I, as I, right. I, when I was a kid, we used to hang out in New Jersey at the River uh, Rivervale Golf Course, which mm -hmm. was uh, formerly the site of the revolution. Mm -hmm. And there, there was like supposedly a slaughter of a battalion. Mm -hmm. Well, we would hang out on the one, I think it was the ninth green or something. I, I don't remember which one, but one night we were hanging out there and we saw the spirits of some of the soldiers mm. that were coming across the green. And my first thought was, you know, some of the other kids were freaking out. I get more freaked out when they get freaked out because then they <laughs> grab you. Right. And they scream and I go, oh my gosh, shut up. You just like made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I wasn't sure. My first thought might have been, are they going to attack us? Mm -hmm. But but they haven't. You know, I, ha I haven't had anything that's actually tried to hurt me yet. Yeah, that's yet. good. I, I say that, yeah, you know, but. Right. Why the, do night's, you... the night's young, so. Oh, true. Why do you think um, spears are trying to communicate? in any way because you know I always think that we can learn something from the past we can learn from their experiences perhaps they're just not finished on this plane why do you right. think they're trying well, to reach out that's like spirit 101 mm -hmm. it's basically what you said there's you know like if the spirit went unnaturally 
let's say mm -hmm. they were murdered or they died prematurely in an accident or something. Well, those spirits are lost and confused. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there's so many um, so, um, educators and eruditic people who know, who have experienced all these things too, have done research. I don't want to say expert because yeah. Look at everyone who says they're an expert in government and they don't know anything. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, I, I just like to say people who have researched it and have gained knowledge from it. Mm -hmm, got um, it. So there's definitely some that I've read and have seen um, that say when these unfinished spirits, and I believe it because of some of them who've reached out to me. And I will tell you one that was called cool, that a, a dead body that I found. Yeah, let but, me hear it. Uh, but I think those who go in naturally are looking, are still looking to maybe to find out why they went that way or, mm -hmm. or they don't know where to go. Okay. So things like that. And I think people that are older who are ready to go, you know, maybe if they got a disease or they're over 90 mm -hmm. and go with those natural causes. Um, right. I, I think if they're a spirit, they're here to tell us something. Like my my grandmother, she went by natural causes, mm -hmm. and, but I and my mom, well, my mom died of cancer, but I think she still reaches out to me. Mm, what do you think but, she's but, trying to say? I think she just wants to protect me. Yeah, but but I think that's the difference. And yes, there's still people, you know, maybe once you do go natural causes, maybe they didn't want to go to heaven, mm -hmm. or if they're not nice, go to hell. But maybe. They're fighting. And I think those are more of the evil ones because what they want to do is suck your energy. Mm. And, and I think they want to come into your, your soul, kind yeah. of like in the conjuring or insidious. Right. Like they live again. To, they want to live again. And a lot of people are definitely, uh, definitely ones who are not receptors, as I call them, mm -hmm. will be easier to take over like lemmings, you know, they're just so easily persuaded in real life. They're going to be easy to persuade when the spirit comes in them because it's not attacking them from the front. It's from the inside. So, yeah. um, yeah. So I think that's why I think the devil can possess people. That's why I think that evil exists because mm -hmm. they're, it's easy for them to take over people. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, it's a constant battle. I mean, Jesus fought it all the time is a constant battle between good and evil, yeah. heaven and hell. So these spirits are basically floating around the earth um, in those different capacities. And that's how I think, you know, if an evil, I have, as I said, the evil, evil hasn't confronted me yet, but yeah, no, I'm was, not saying that it can't happen. It's possible. Well, I was talking to a girl last week and she was talking about her experience with a supposed possession and talking about how she was like attacking her friends and she got this like scratch mark on her legs and all of this and that no one was believing her no one they were just we need to put her in a mental hospital and I, I'm curious about your opinion and where do you think people should go how do they even begin to talk about their experiences or perhaps get help with their experiences if no one's listening around them no well, that's kind of reminds me of you know, like the movies like The Conjuring and Insidious or mm -hmm. The Exorcist. Remember when like, you know, they brought Linda Blair in the first time and everyone thought she was just mental. Mm -hmm. She was having sort of schizophrenic experience. Yeah. Uh, well, that's why I think in the old days, you know, you had all of these superstitious people, even the doctors mm -hmm. who thought that possession was just, you know, mental illness and they put leeches on them thinking that's going to cure everything. Um, or sit, lie, or I mean, some mm -hmm. things that like kill these people. Right. But um, fortunately now, especially with the internet and things like that, there's tons of support groups for spirit people. People mm -hmm. are in the ghosts and the paranormal. And I think it's become more acceptable. Yeah, you're still gonna get people that think you're a mental case, mm -hmm. but um, I think with more and more, the sad thing is, unfortunately, with all of these ghost shows that are so frivolous mm -hmm. and can be disproved in a second, I think that makes a lot of people skeptical too, like you said, and they don't, they won't believe them. Yeah, That's why um, I like videotaping 
because when things happen, it's more, I think, resonant with people and it's, it's more, uh, I think, valid because you can see it on tape. Right. But yeah. that's, and, but they're not forcing it. It's like, uh, like caught on tape, the paranormal. I like that show on the, tra- I'm so glad the travel channel has decided to do all these paranormal it's things. It's all paranormal. I love it. How interesting that shift of <laughs> videos and right uh, from go, wow. going on a road trip to like you know the Rockies to mm-hmm. dealing with ghosts but um but yeah now there's support like anyone who experiences something I am so welcome to hear about it mm-hmm. because I've experienced so much myself and that was just going to lead me to one of the coolest ghost things that I've encountered and this was a long time ago a friend of mine who was the son of a famous actor in LA we lived in the same building mm-hmm. And he smoked and drank and he kind of wanted to live like his dad, you know, become an actor, get famous, but yeah. he didn't have the same talent. So he just resolved himself to drinking and smoking. Mm. Well, he died in his apartment and um, he just collapsed. Of I, I think he had alcohol poisoning it was, was finally uh, decided in the autopsy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm the one that discovered his body. He had been dead for two weeks. Wow. his I I was I don't always see him anyway we just pass in the hallway sometimes I would see him and um but his family his brother and sister would always check on him like every once a month mm-hmm. kind of like a welfare check well anyway it was in the middle of the month so the landlord asked me to see if he was okay mm-hmm. uh, so I knocked on the door and then used the key to open it the death smell you know like when Yep. A body has been decaying was overwhelming and it was at night and he had a cat and it was an indoor outdoor cat so it would go out the window well I heard chewing so my first thought is mm. a cat chewing him up yeah. or eating him. <laughs> well then I looked down from the light from the outside in the courtyard and it was the cat eating some chicken bones that had gotten <laughs> from the <laughs> so but then I hear the static from the tv kind of like in poltergeist right from around the corner down the hallway to the bedroom so I walked to the edge of the hallway and the tv's right through the door of the bedroom so you could see the angle by the wall mm. and it's the static and I see some feet dangling at the end of the bed Ooh. so well first call I asked the stupidest question you could ask are you okay <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Thinking that he's going to answer. Mm-hmm. So, so I slowly make my way down the hall to the bedroom door, which was at the end of the hall. And I look, and there he is dissolved mm. with like maggots all over him and flies and liquid draining down the bed. And um, it was, it was sad, but the, the right. smell was just the overwhelming part of it. Yeah. So I, I run out and I actually took a picture of it. Hmm. So I still have it. But I went and I called the paramedics and I called the fire department. And then the coroner came and it, it was so bad that they had to use the cigars to get the smell out wow. of the area. Mm-hmm. So then the hazmat team came. They had to come twice because it was that bad. Mm-hmm. And I helped carry the the coroner's bag down to the meat wagon. Mm. And one of the coroner assistants dropped the bag and it almost ripped open with his body in it. Oh my God. Yeah. Because there was no elevator. It was a two-story walk-up. Yeah, yeah. And then um, and then the next day, I get a call from the lady who lived downstairs. She was an old lady from New York. Mm-hmm. Which coincidentally enough, her son was a film director I knew who did the Friday the 13th TV series. Wow. So they were in the paranormal. But she's like this 80-year-old New Yorker. And she was on oxygen. And she, mm-hmm. I mean, sweet, but she'd be like, Dave, would you like some rolls from the restaurant? Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, okay. So she was so sweet. She would get me Italian food and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so she called. And there were the flies were coming through the ceiling <gasps> from from the body. So the hazmat team had to come in there. Mm-hmm. And that was all within like a day or two. Well, anyway, the next day, this is where the paranormal stuff happens. Mm-hmm. I'm in my apartment and his spirit flies into the room and it's 
floating there like a like an angel but it's just sort of a a disembodied spirit image yeah. like a ghost yeah and he looks lost and he looks at me and i say it's okay you can go you're done mm. and that just kind of came out and he looked at me and laughed wow you know That's of course it's when people say you're full of crap that didn't happen and but you know what there's other people that have experienced who believe it as well. well I was going to say, it's how like did you people. know it was him? Was it kind of like his shape? His No, you could see it pretty clear. Mm. I mean, it was transparent, but it was clear as when I saw those Revolutionary War soldiers walking yeah. in the dark. Right. So it wasn't like a shadow figure or anything. Did you know that's what he wanted to hear? I had no idea. That was just my first reaction because he looked lost. Mm. And from and just from my personal experience, and you know, I never really, when I was younger, studied about ghosts and things. It's just sort of I got either from the movies I watched mm -hmm. or you know, things like that, or on TV. But it was just something natural that came to me. And I said that was the first thing I thought, because I've always I'm always wanting to help people, right. whether they're alive or dead. And I just thought that was, maybe, I don't know, maybe he was looking for something in the apartment that he left, like a mm -hmm. book or something. But I just said, you know, it's time for you to go and it's yeah. okay. And then he moved on. So, you know, wow. I think that's why he moved on. So mm. has a, has a spirit ever helped you or said anything to you that like changed the trajectory of something you were doing no other than the fact that that psychic came up to me and said my grandmother was my spirit guide and guardian mm -hmm. angel mm -hmm. I was curious said, how do you feel about um psychics mediums um and you know because I there's a lot of um a lot of fakes out there you know a lot of people just try oh to take God, others yes. money all those phony ones and stuff. well it's same in religion look at all mm -hmm. the fake pastors and stuff and ministers that just get on tv for money like joel Osteen, they, people like that <laughs> so um i think this in this particular if the psychic had asked me for money mm -hmm. and he was going up to every celebrity there at the signing i would say yeah that was a fake too mm -hmm. but um the fact that he didn't ask for anything, he just said he'd never done this before. He wanted to come up and tell me. Mm -hmm. and, and then after a few minutes left and I never saw him again, mm -hmm. I do believe that there's psychics out there with ESP who are spiritual, who can contact the other side, who can predict the future, who mm -hmm. know things. Um, but yeah, I'd say 99% of them know are fake. Well, there's this TV series that came out on Netflix. I believe it came out this summer. Um, a guy named Tyler Henry. Uh, the show. Yes, called I, I have Netflix, so I've heard about him. I was curious, what are your thoughts on that show? That's such a, you know, to be on Netflix, such a large platform, and for him to kind of be, you know, saying, this is what I do. It's what it is. You know what I mean? I haven't watched the show yet. So oh, well. that's on my list to watch. Oh, well. But I, I heard it. I heard you know, both sides about him, mm -hmm. you know, there's still going to be people you can't convince, even if they shove it right in your face. That's you true. Know, like if, if, if a book flies across the room, they're probably going to say, well, a truck went by or there was an earthquake or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I say, no, in fact, the haunted library where I go here in Sistersville, mm -hmm. um, I, they caught something on the security cameras. And then my friend who's librarian, Shauna, told me about it. And I looked at the videotape. And indeed, a book did fly off the shelf. And it couldn't have been other books because the book was part of a whole group of books next to each other. And why would one book fly off and not shake the other ones? Right. So I put that up on my Facebook page. And hmm. so... Um, and it was a while, it was months ago, but if they scroll down, they can still see it and stuff up there. Yeah, I'm curious about, so what's the community like around you in general? Do you, Are you surrounded by friends who also believe in what you believe? Or do you find yourself surrounded by some people who are just so skeptical? 
well, this being a really haunted town, well, West Virginia itself is one of the most haunted states in the country. Mm. And it's and it's got a reputation that people already know about it. But yeah, there's a lot of old people, especially mm. where I live, because I'm in a small town. Yeah. And I go, you know, a lot of young people, when they graduate high school, they leave here. And that's mm-hmm. a sad thing. I love it because it's right along the Ohio River. And because a lot of things have happened, it was in the Civil War. It was involved in the Revolution. And I mean, this land has such a huge history, but there's just a lot of old people here. And mm-hmm. it's, kind of, it's kind of sad because I'm the youngest person in my apartment building. Wow. I'd say like, Oh my God. I said, I can't call them cougars because <laughs> coug- cougar would mean you're interested. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all they talk about is who died and who's got amputated and whose kids moved away. And why doesn't anyone like them? I mean, yeah. it's, like, it's good for comedy, but, um, but as far as, you know, uh, the type of people here, there's a lot, but there are some young that I become friends with. There's mm-hmm. a really cool guy that I'm friends with named um, Alex King, mm-hmm. and he's a writer and oh. he writes very dark things. His stuff has been published, mm-hmm. um, but he believes in all of this as well. And, and he and I talk about things like that as well. So there's a few. And then I started dating this girl that I actually met when I first moved here, mm-hmm. but she was very... In fact, she was so shy. It took three years for her to say, okay, I'll go out with you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but she's real. And she had always, she's in the cemetery. In fact, our first date was at the cemetery. It was a picnic lunch there. Wow. Romantic. Look at you. Yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> so, um, and then we, you know, we've just been taking walks and we're going to be doing a lot of things for Halloween. I've got so much Halloween activity coming up. Yeah. What's the um, Halloween plans? Well, for uh, this weekend, I am going to be, I don't know when you air your podcast, but this weekend, which is the 21st of October, Mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a book signing because I have a children's book out called Bag Boy and Sweet Slob, which has been Mm -hmm. winning awards and doing really well. And as I said, go to my website, all of the stuff is on there, mm-hmm. but um, I'm doing the West Virginia book festival with the publisher signing there. And then on my way back, I am going to be hosting and judging the trans Allegheny insane asylums, asylum mm-hmm. ball, which wow. is, and I don't know, you're in the paranormal. So I don't know if you've heard of that place. It's one of the most intensely haunted mental institutions in America it's been featured on documentaries and in Mm -hmm. movies have been shot there so that's on the way from back from Charleston West Virginia which is where the book festival is I'm going to be doing that on Saturday night wow will that be your first time there yes and I'm so Mm -hmm. looking forward I've always just wanted to go Mm -hmm. (laughs) but now I actually get to be the host of the event, which is really cool. And then uh, last month I did a signing at the Moundsville Penitentiary. I don't know if you've heard of that. That's where Manson was supposed to be before they Mm -hmm. transferred him to California. Mm -hmm. So I've experienced some stuff there when I went out there. So the books, the other book signing was there. And then um, I have a show called Cemetery Go-Go. I've always wanted to do a horror radio show, but that was kind of like a throwback to Dr. Demento and old Saturday morning horror and late night creature features, Mm -hmm. but do it, do it as a radio show. So I had an opportunity when I moved out here to work with a guy from the local radio station. And he said, you want to do a show like on our high school radio station? I said, sure. I said, I always want to do a horror one. Yeah. So I came up with one called Cemetery Go-Go. And being a musician, I recorded and wrote the theme song. And I came up with a character called the Groovy Grave Creeper, (laughs) which is like this goofy guy that lives at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. And the whole show is like an hour pre-recorded of music and weird novelties and old uh, radio commercials and television Mm -hmm. commercials and movie trailers. And I I read fake letters from like Frankenstein's monster and all the other Mm -hmm. creatures. And then 
the groovy grape creeper has an advice column. So he, he gives like all of these weird horror creatures advice mm -hmm. and people send him letters. It's really kind of- That sounds fun. It's a fun show. And it's on, it got syndicated. So it's on stations around the country. And uh, on the website, there's also a link on Cemetery Gogo's page to all of the radio stations and where you could hear them. Um, so I loved it. And, um, and so I'm going to be also do, appearing in Marietta, Ohio at the end of the month because mm -hmm. they picked up the show. And we're going to do something called Spooktacular. Ooh. And that's going to, I'm looking so forward to that. That's awesome. So, so the, you're those booked. are some of the things. <laughs> What's booked. that? I said you're booked. <laughs> okay. I am so booked, and but I love it, and you know I'm, you... I'm constantly working. I mean, I never stop. My band's been touring. I just played with a band I put together called the Weird Characters. Mm. Uh, we did a big show at Fright Fest in um, no Fright Farm, sorry, in mm -hmm. Smithfield, Pennsylvania. It's a three. It's one of the top ten haunts of America Ooh. by like um oh what is it the ones that do all the ratings for things around the country mm -hmm. yeah I know I don't know the name but I know exactly what there's you're a few about. of them but it's ranked in one of them so we were asked to perform there and then we got to tour the entire area which was really really cool and I saw some weird things up there so mm -hmm. um I love when it's out in the wilderness because I think you're more receptive yeah. And you know, when you have like a city that blocks things, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think the spirits want to go there. Right. Personally. You, I was going to say, do you have um, like outside of like October or the months leading, leading up to October, do you still do a lot of this paranormal stuff or is it, you know, all year? All year. Every day, I love to, that. Me is, every day to me is Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I just, uh, when I was in California last week, I, um, was at Mon Son of Monster Palooza because my friend runs it. It's one of the biggest horror conventions in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, like you had people from uh, what is it? Um, Night of uh, what is it? Nightmare on Elm Street three. Mm -hmm. Then you have people from like RoboCop, every other horror movie you could think of. Yeah, yeah. And, and then they have displays and things, and I just love it. I live it twenty four hour, uh, hours a day, three hundred sixty five days a year, and I'm always writing. I have mm -hmm. a bunch of horror movies that my agent and I are working on. I just wrote a script for Sean Young from Blade Runner. Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote a horror movie called um, Slumber Party Slash Over. Oh. And, and I got some uh, active friends to be part of that. I have a show that was on Amazon called Professor Creepy Scream Party. Mm. And that was my tribute to Vincent Price and old horror host like Elvira. Yeah, like yeah. Using a little midget person. Mm -hmm. And Martin Kleber from Pirates of the Caribbean is going to be my host when the series goes. But the first episode we shot was with Kevin Thompson, who was one of the Ewoks in Star Wars. Wow. So and it's all about it's a it's a goofy comedy variety show mm -hmm. that's built around horror we shot it at the cia in um, north hollywood which is california institute of abnormal arts mm -hmm. sadly the guy who ran it and owned it for 30 years he just sold it and oh. dissolved the freak show that was in there he had monkey paws and a dead clown mm. in a loose sight casket and i mean a real one Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, oh my and he sold it and I was like so sad that he shut it down and stuff but um so we I do this 24 hours a day yeah what is your I'd love to end off and kind of know what's your ultimate goal like if I go what is what do you want to do what do you want to leave on this earth in the paranormal horror world I want to leave a legacy that I created things in the paranormal, whether it's fictional or real, mm -hmm. um, that when people, they look at it, whether it's the books or the movies or TV shows or anything, the radio, is that it made them think about the paranormal and it made them like the paranormal. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to go, I love freaking people out. Don't get me wrong on that. But I want people to say they enjoyed it. Yeah. Just like people go to a haunt. 
like Universal Horror Nights or something, mm -hmm. or a maze. They go there because they want to be scared, but they do it with fun, knowing that they can get out of there alive. Yeah, yeah. So that's the legacy I want to leave with all the work that I create. And one last thing with that is mm -hmm. um, I started something here called YouthTube, Y-O-U-T-H, Tube, which is kind of like YouTube, but for youth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And some of the first, and we're going to shoot it here in West Virginia with a lot of the kids that are really in the movies and stuff like that. We are going to shoot our own ghost shows here for youth too. Mm. So wow. look out for that. And I'll put that up on my Snuggy Bear site as well. Yeah, I was going to say, tell everybody where they can find you, website, socials, all that. Everything is on SnuggyBear.com. Links to my Facebook. Uh, they could, I, I want them to go to snuggybear.com so they could see everything before they go to Facebook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I have an Instagram, but that's just for political memes. So I don't yeah. get that out. <laughs> Spell Snuggy Bear for us so I can make sure that's correct. S-N-U-G-G-Y-B-E-A-R.com. And on there as well are um, links to my books. I would love for them to get the children's book. And it's been getting five-star reviews. We're getting the second one ready to go. And also for Brain Explosion, my Lampoon book. But um, I would love for just them to keep going there to see what's happening in the paranormal as well as everything else. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Dave, this was amazing. I really appreciate you taking the time out to talk about this. Not everybody wants to talk about it or feels like they have a safe space to talk about this. So I appreciate you coming over here and sharing all your resources and your stories. Uh, guys, this was the It's Spooky Season podcast, episode five with Dave Shelton. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.